You're listening to the Future Tech Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies such as artificial intelligence, stem cells, 3D printing, gene editing, Bitcoin, blockchain, the microbiome, quantum computing, virtual reality, and exploring space are much closer than you might think. In fact, many early versions of these technologies are in play right now, and the companies that are using these technologies are the focus of this podcast. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a thorny medical problem. Remember, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and tell your friends about it. Thank you. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Future Tech and Future Tech Health Podcast, and I have Caitlin Parsons. She's a holistic health coach, and uh, the website is CaitlinParsons.com. Caitlin is K-A-T-E-L-Y-N-P-A-R-S-O-N-S.com. So thanks for coming, Caitlin. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Doing well. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so tell me, um, what is a holistic health coach, and how did you come to be such a thing? Yeah, absolutely. Do you want the full story from the, the very beginning of my health journey or just like my business journey, which the shorter, the longer. Uh, a little, <laughs> yeah, a little bit of the early part and then uh, a little okay. more detail as we get along. The, you know, the thing yeah, I yeah. noticed is um, I call everyone in health essentially is a superhero because they've all had an origin story. They all have like this really tough origin story, which I'm sure you do too. And they've all had to overcome all these obstacles and bad guys in order to get where they are. So, you know, maybe it sounds cheesy, mm-hmm. but Again, people in health like yourself are superheroes for that reason. There's many <laughs> elements about you and others that uh, resemble superheroes. So so what's your origin Aww. story? Thanks. Yeah. So I, I definitely had my own um, struggles and my own journey going to uh, that led me to eventually where I am today. So I'm from Florida originally. I um, went to school there, got my degree at Florida State and uh, moved to Philly after college for about seven years. And now I live in San Diego. Um, and it's really funny. It's interesting. I was in, I was interested in food from a very young age, um, but in a completely different way. I, I can't really remember a time in my life where I wasn't on some kind of a diet. I was constantly right. obsessed with looking at how to manipulate minim- excuse me, manipulate my body in different ways, different diets to be on, um, constantly trying to lose weight without even really needing to, just obsessed with the idea, restricting my food, um, and eventually found um, that led to bulimia. And I started binging and purging when I was probably 13 or 14 and had a pretty tough battle with it. I, um, I unfortunately dealt with that probably up until I was 26, my mid twenties. And it was, uh, it was hard. It was really debilitating. It was definitely something that roadblocked a lot of my goals in life. I I felt like I wasn't worthy of a lot of things. I was so consumed with that entire process. It was hard to feel like I was ever going to crawl out of that hole. And so um, I majored in fashion in college got a job at a fashion company in Philadelphia, moved up there after school and started working and was still pretty deeply rooted in my eating disorder, trying to figure things out, switched careers to do um, recruiting for accounting and finance for a while, just trying to find my path. And when I was in that career path, I had kind of just reached my rock bottom with my bulimia and with my personal struggles and realized I just literally physically could not move forward um, with that part of my life anymore. It just, it was, it was so bad that it was just taking me down in so many ways. So I sought out help again, went through treatment, went through therapy, um, got a lot of help from my family, my friends, um, emotional support, you know, all of that. And I had 
done that on some level before. This time was a little different because I was also at a place where I was becoming more of an advocate for my own health too. And just realizing, okay, I've done this before. Something has to change to where I am really making a difference for the long run. I'm never going back to this type of behavior again. And so I really started exploring nutrition and using food as a form of healing rather than harming, which was, it's ironic now that I can like actually say that and look back at that. Um, and I had no idea what that meant at that part in my life. I, food was really a tool for self-harm, for self-abuse, for something that I wanted to be joyful, but really was causing me so much pain. And so to be able to look at it in this completely different way really shifted the paradigm for a lot of things in my life. And it really helped me take control of my health in a really powerful way. And so I realized at that point when I was kind of going down the rabbit hole with just nutrition and how the food we eat affects our bodies, how our external environment affects our internal health and um, really looking at our body's um, ecology and being able to, to understand that in a completely different way um, was life-changing. And I knew that I wanted to keep exploring it. So I went back to school. I got my health coaching certification through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. And when I was in that program, I started coaching women, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. I, I didn't really have an agenda when I was going to school. Um, I more or less was exploring the opportunity of where a certification like that could lead me. And I found out very quickly that that was my purpose, working with other women and helping them with their health as well and their personal struggles and, um, you know, really helping them work through the trenches and seeing a big transformation. And it has evolved in a pretty big way since I first started. But, um, but yeah, that, that really led me to find my purpose in life. I know that sounds a little daunting, but it's it's truly really what I believe. And I just think it's such a crazy, uh, crazy thing to look back on and connect the dots and realize, wow, that 10 years, 10 plus years of really going through the trenches and struggling led me to um, the other side where I'm I'm using that tool in a completely different way. So, so what's become of, uh, your focus? Are you working with yeah. people that just want to improve their health or are you focusing on people with uh, eating disorders? Yes. So I'm glad you asked that. And quickly, so you asked about holistic health coach, how that's different from just a regular health coach in general. And uh, I'll get into what I focus on. But a holistic health coach really focuses on more elements than just food alone. So I, I really factor in a lot of lifestyle components that um, support a major transformation when I'm working with somebody. So first of all, looking at the individual and not grouping every single person together. I really focus on bio-individuality, which means what's right for one person is not necessarily right for every single person. Um, and factoring in more components than just food. So career relationships, spirituality, your joy, the sense of pleasure that you get from waking up every day, your personal goals, um, and focusing on, on all of those areas rather than just food alone, food being the foundational component and really the mindset work as well, going hand in hand to really see a big change. So that's, that's what holistic means, um, you know, in terms of how I see it with my work. And um, I focus on, actually, I focus on women who want to release weight. And it's interesting, I'll be very honest, that was something that I was struggling with for a while, because I had so many clients coming to me and that was the the main thing that they wanted to focus on. That was the area that they were struggling with the most. And having gone through an eating disorder most of my life, it was um it was a sensitive topic for me to come back to when I had been struggling with weight loss for so long in such a negative way. It was really hard for me to relook at that and say, how can I offer this to somebody when I just want to give them all of the love and support and tell them they're beautiful and help them find their path. And I just kind of had to take a step back and get out of my own way and realize that, you know, that's my, that's my personal concern, not theirs. 
And my job is to be there and support them in the best way possible and essentially help them reach this goal in the healthiest way possible so that they don't have to rely on dieting or disorder eating patterns. And so many of the Wait, things uh, that I struggle. One, one question here. What, are you saying it was your goal for people to lose weight or that's what they're telling you they wanted to do, but yet somehow that conflicted with your goals or that reminded you of the never ending goal for you? I mean, I'm not, yeah, I yeah, absolutely. It's hand over hand. My, my client's goal to always, it's always their goal to lose weight. I just kind of realized that that is the type of client that I find myself attracting. Um, okay. and so, yeah, does that make sense? And so, you know, clearly I, I was conflicted because from a point of weight loss, that was something that had, had really put me into a downward spiral for so long. And so now I've completely repositioned the way that I see weight loss and how to help my clients achieve that in a way so that they don't have to rely on dieting. They don't have to rely on disordered eating behaviors or any of the things that I struggled with when I was so focused on that. And so now I really help them release that weight. Um, from yeah, that's a, what I was going to ask you is, uh, yeah, you don't say lose weight, you say release weight. So can you, why the distinction? What's the difference there? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, releasing weight from three different areas. So I focus on releasing weight physically, emotionally, and also mentally. And I'll explain that a little bit more so that it's helpful for your listeners. But physically, I really like to help my clients understand how to work with their body rather than against it so that you are rebalancing your internal system in a way that's just um, setting you up for effortless weight loss. So I really focus on helping my clients balance their blood sugar, uh, repairing the health of their gut, optimizing digestion, work, working with their body's natural detoxification process. So really helping them get clear on all of these areas so that they feel like they're in the driver's seat of their own health. And once they are balanced in all of these areas and have a sense of how to make uh, these really integral parts work best for them, that's really when you see a lot of, uh, a lot of change and a lot of uh, my clients reach their goals just from understanding their internal structure even more and how to connect to that. So that's where the physical piece comes in. Emotionally, I really help my clients release the weight of obsessing around food and being super attached to food cravings and overeating patterns and a lot of the emotions that come um, with food in general. So really helping them release that weight and then the mental weight, just releasing the food guilt, guilt, the obsession, the yo-yo dieting, just this constant thought pattern of um, obsessing over food all the time and what you should or shouldn't be eating and um, kind of approaching it from that way. Does that help? Yeah, no, that helps. I just, I just wasn't clear on. It. So the people that come to you, what are their, what's their thought pattern sound like? And I know it's not just one thought pattern, everyone's different, but what are the main two or three or four thought patterns that women have about their weight that you think, you know, needs to be improved or changed when they tell mm -hmm. you when they initially encounter you? Yeah, absolutely. I would say the biggest struggles that most of my clients face are feeling or they're self-sabotaging with food. They feel out of control with food. They um, aren't really sure how to eat in a way that's going to help them feel satiated and, um, not constantly craving. Um, a lot of my clients deal with a restrict binge mentality, meaning they restrict for a lot of their days or they're just busy and so they're not eating during their days and then coming home and finding themselves eating emotionally on the couch at night, whether it's alone or they're with a partner, just relaxing, uh, watching TV. Um, a lot of confusion around dieting in terms of just trying different things, not having them work this all or nothing mindset where I'm either on the diet or I'm off the diet or I'm eating clean this week or I'm just eating crap when I'm on vacation and needing to start a diet when as soon as I get home and uh, binging on the weekends. And so really this just uh, unique confusion with food overall is probably the, the number one challenge that a lot of my clients face. And so uh, I really help them understand food and make it easy for them to eat so that they can approach it in a completely different way, but also help them really connect the dots to 
their body chemistry and why they're feeling this way, why, why they're feeling these cravings, why, and not in a, not in a woo woo. <laughs> I mean, we, we work on mindset. Absolutely. But really just the basic science of how your body functions. So what you need to eat to, um, you know, feel really good and energized and nourished in your body so that you're not constantly relying on, on food as a crutch. Does that help? Yeah, no, that's fine. I, like I said, what uh, I get here, some of the things that, you know, I've heard women say, or my wife say, and stuff like that. Um, what, I mean, for male listeners and for female listeners, I mean, what are some things you've discovered about how women think about their weight and their image that maybe most people don't appreciate or don't know, or, you know, are not even aware of that you've discovered by working with so many people? Mm, um, image psychology, the power of just detoxing your external environment and really um, putting yourself in a place where you're getting out of the comparison game. So especially with social media, this is this is really interesting and just at this point in uh, in our society, you know, we're constantly scrolling and looking at other people. And, and one of the biggest um, areas where I found improvement for my clients outside of just eating in general is just detoxing their social media accounts, not following people who have a body image that's unrealistic to the goals that they're trying to achieve and subconsciously causing, um, you know, mental self-harm and really just bringing down their confidence overall. And so finding people, finding accounts that you can look at and feel inspired by in a realistic way as well. Somebody who might be a little bit closer to where you are in your body right now, or maybe, um, you know, just kind of on the same parameter rather than somebody who's just at a point in their body or their life where you just start subconsciously comparing all of the time. And so that's probably one of the most powerful ways um, and your friends too, you know, really just, you know, one of the biggest things that I see with women is um, showing up to meals and feeling so self-conscious around how they build their plate. And that's one of the things that I really love to empower all of my clients with is not focusing on a meal plan, not focusing on a diet or a protocol, but creating a lifestyle that you can take with you anywhere and learning how to build your plate that's going in a way that's going to make you feel really good eating abundantly rather than restrictively um, so that you can eat this way, whether you're at home, you're out at a restaurant, you're on vacation in any type of situation and also creating a sense of balance in the sense of, you know, I don't believe in cheat days, um, but I do believe in, opportunities to live in the moment and really taking advantage of situations where if you're at a birthday party and there's cake, you're not going to feel limited or restricted to not have the piece of cake. Because here's the thing, when you're about, when your blood sugar is balanced, when you have taken control of your health internally, your body's going to bounce back very quickly and it's going to detoxify um, quickly as well as opposed to this constant up and down up and down yo-yo game of dieting um, binging restricting binging restricting so a treat here and there something that you normally wouldn't have every single day is definitely not going to cause an unraveling by any means and so showing up to meals and really building your plate in a way that is nourishing for you no matter of what other people think um, I think that is one of the biggest barriers that a lot of clients feel conflicted with at first because they're used to eating really small meals or they're used to eating just a salad and then kind of grazing through the rest of their day rather than eating nutritionally, uh, nutritious foods abundantly. So what, you know, what's one example of a surprising plate that you've built for yourself or for someone else that, you know, the person felt great. They were like, I can't believe I could eat this and feel good. You know, what are Maybe one or two examples. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Um, so I'm a big fan of creating uh, around healthy protein, uh, quality fats, and good cruciferous veg veggies, uh, bringing in lots of fiber. Those three uh, components really help to balance your blood sugar and give you energy and stop the crazy food cravings. They really that combination really helps to set you up for success with 
you know, with your day and also create some really delicious meals as well. And so I think one of the biggest surprises for a lot of my clients and one of the biggest fears when we get started is just adding in more healthy fat. Most of my clients are still um, grabbing fat-free, reduced fat, low-fat options, just a lot of fear around full-fat um, foods and also just confused around what healthy fat is. I actually have a free guide for healthy fat because it's so confusing um, because that's equally important. But, you know, adding in more healthy fat to your plate is probably the biggest takeaway that's going to give you, um, you know, a really big transformation, but it's also a big surprise for a lot of my clients too, just because there's so much fear around it. Hmm. So what's the, uh, what, what's a typical engagement with you look like? You know, what's, uh, how long and, you know, what type of meetings and what kind of things do you do with clients? Yeah. So I work online over Zoom video. So my clients are all over the country and I have a four month uh, VIP program that I do with clients who want more private one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, we meet bi-weekly, and as an added bonus, I um, I use Voxer support as well, which is almost like a walkie-talkie system. So I always like to say I'm basically in your pocket for four months. Um, you can reach out anytime, ask questions. It's you know because there's so much emotional work and so many questions that come up in the process too. I never want my clients to feel like oh I have to wait until my next session to ask this, or I have to write out this long email using um, Voxer is, has been great because it really helps my client feel supported throughout the entire process. So along with that, I do additional resources, guides, um, you know, cheat sheets, email follow-ups, all of the things to really tailor the, the program specifically to their needs. But I do focus on some pretty, uh, pretty key areas as well. So I focus on balancing blood sugar, um, helping them learn how to eat through ener eat for energy, teaching them how to grocery shop, getting very specific on how to navigate it in a way so that it's not confusing. You feel empowered when you're going to the grocery store, optimizing your body's digestion and detoxification, creating a really powerful morning and evening routine, um, and then some additional areas as well. My goal is to help my clients feel like they can do this on their own after our time together. And so it's really important for me to just create a really thorough understanding throughout the entire four months together too, so that it's not another just health program they signed up for. It's really a transformation. And then I also have a group coaching program that I run quarterly as well. And I take on a handful of clients with that um, so that I can be really present and offer um offer a lot of support throughout the process too. I plug them into a VIP Facebook group, which is amazing because it's full of my recent and past clients. And so it's a good way to engage based on all the information that everybody's learned collectively and ask questions and for me to show up and answer and just offer some additional support too. So what do um, the successful clients, what do they do versus the ones that have issues and can't get through the program or relapse? Mm. Um, absolutely finding their why from the very beginning, really getting clear on their mindset and understanding, connecting the reason for starting this to a long-term outcome. Um, that's the biggest thing hands down. If a client has a hard time getting there or is, or is resistant to that, they're most likely not going to be able to sustain all of the changes because it's, you know, this is a lot of work that we do together to really make a big change. And so understanding what that means for you specifically, it's going to be different for every person, but that's going to be the key that really unlocks the success for long-term results. And so for some people that might be, I need to, I need to take control of my health so that I can open up the business that I've always wanted to start it always wanted to start. I want to get back into the dating game and find the love of my life. I want to prepare my body for the baby that I want to try for in the next couple of years, or maybe it's a fear of diabetes in the future, knowing that they need to take this into their hands to prevent uh, illness that's going to unravel. And so really just getting very, very clear on their particular why, and that helps me too, so that I can always bring back any challenges 
into their personal why as well and and help them um, help them through the harder times. Right. Um, any uh, have you encountered many outliers, women that uh, you know you've worked to help, but for some reason they just they just can't get the help. I mean, would you know? I don't know exact, but do most of the people that go through your your program see success, or is it just about everybody? And you know, if uh, if there is a problem or if someone is an outlier, has there been ever has there been people you just haven't been able to help for one reason or another? No, not really, because I I also do a very uh, a very in depth consultation before I take anybody on too. And I don't, I don't accept just anybody into my coaching program either. And it's so important to me to have that consultation because I, I don't intend to work with every single person that comes my way. I need to understand exactly what the client is struggling with so that I can be completely confident in letting them know that I'm the right person to work with. And if I'm not, um, I'll be able to refer them out appropriately. And so um, it just helps me understand what their goals are, what their current struggles are even better, and then invite them into a coaching program if I feel like they would be the, the good, a good candidate for that. And that's why I, I always have success because I'm very clear with that process. I'm not going to take somebody on who I know is really not going to show up and do the work. Um, I need to make sure that the person who wants to work with me is coachable. And so I'm pretty clear on that in our initial consultation. Um, why they want the coaching and what their personal expectations are throughout the process too. So that's really helped helped me just as a business owner as well. Just I, I I'm in this to help people to help you know help people transform their lives and really see these big results so that they can do all of the things that they want to in their life so that they really can approach everything from a place of joy and not constantly thinking about food and just making it so easy for them. And I'm so passionate because I struggled with that for so long. And I, I really never thought that I would have a life where I wasn't just constantly thinking about food or a diet or obsessing over my weight um, and feeling good and confident in my body. And so um, it's just a matter of getting on the same page with the right clients before I actually take them on as a client. And I also only take on a handful of clients at one time because I work so closely with every single person that I take on privately. Okay. What, what do you think it was in, you know, we're almost at the end, by the way, but what was it in your life? Was it one event or a sudden realization? What caused you to like finally, you know, let go of the weight demons and be okay with how you were? Um, in terms of saying like, I need to make a change right now. Well, you said you're, you know, you're obsessed with food and losing weight and, you know, how much you weighed and all the other stuff. Like, you know, are you, uh, are you thin now so that you don't have to worry about it and you're happy with your weight or are you still heavy and yeah, you're still happy with your weight? Like, where did you end up settling personally? Oh, and why do yeah. you think I'm, that, how'd you get there? What was like the, the big linchpin that got you there? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry if I wasn't clear on that in the beginning. I think that was, that was one of my biggest struggles is, for me, it was this body dysmorphia. Um, you know, I constantly thought that I needed to lose weight, which realistically, I, I never really did. I was never in, I was never in a um, unhealthy body or a larger body where I really had an excess amount of weight to lose. And so for me, it was just, it was a constant obsession with dieting and trying to lose this weight that probably would never come off because it, it just, it wasn't in my body's genetic makeup. I didn't really have that much to lose. And so for me, it was really um, shifting my mindset and understanding that and realizing that where my body is now um, is where it's meant to be um, and helping to support that optimally so that I didn't have to yo-yo diet anymore. For me, it was releasing the obsession around food. And that's really where I help my clients win as well because when they release that and when they do balance their blood sugar and optimize their digestion they will move into the place their own personal set point weight that's natural for them and for a lot of my clients if weight loss is a goal and they are in you know a a larger body so to speak when this is under um, you know when they have an idea of how to do this it does effortlessly just happen for happen for them because they're balancing everything out and they're working with their body's natural system and rhythm. Um, for me also, it, it was absolutely just with bulimia. It was, um, you know, the 
the health of my teeth. My mom's a dental hygienist. And so for me, that was completely embarrassing growing up and feeling like I had this huge secret to hide. And then eventually getting into, you know, young adulthood and seeing the effects on my enamel and everything and realizing I've got to, I've also got to stop this because you only get one set of teeth in your life, you know? And so for me, that was a big point in my personal why too. And I share that story with my clients because I'm so passionate about finding your personal why to get this gut gut reaction. Like I have to make this change or else something is going to happen. Okay. Well, very good. So what's the best way for people to get in contact with you and to inquire about your program and go through the process to evaluate whether they should be a client or not? Yeah. Um, they can go to my website. It's caitlinparsons.com. I think you said that at the beginning. Uh, you could always send me an email. It's hello at caitlinparsons.com. I'm on social media at caitlin.parsons on Instagram. I always show up there and share tips and really engage with um, that community as much as possible just to be able to add as much value as I can and answer questions and everything. I also run a Facebook group um, called Modern Girl Holistic uh, Stop Your Food Craving. And um, that's, that's pretty much it. That's where I am. Okay. Well, very good. Caitlin, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. You're listening to the Future Tech Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies such as artificial intelligence, stem cells, 3D printing, gene editing, Bitcoin, blockchain, the microbiome, quantum computing, virtual reality, and exploring space are much closer than you might think. In fact, many early versions of these technologies are in play right now and the companies that are using these technologies are the focus of this podcast. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a thorny medical problem. Remember, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoyed the podcast, Please listen, subscribe, like, and tell your friends about it. Thank you.